What did Pharaoh order to happen to all the Hebrew babies? What did God tell Moses to tell Pharaoh, and how did God save his people? We're going to talk about that and more in today's confirmation video, so stick around. Welcome back, Confirmands. Good to be with you today. Now, if you remember last time as we were going through our overview of the Bible, we left off with the story of Joseph, the great-grandson of Abraham, and how we remembered how God, through Joseph, saved Abraham's family from a widespread famine by bringing them down into Egypt where there was plenty of food. And because everyone could see how Joseph revered God, he and his family, that is his brothers and all his nieces and nephews, were well respected and taken care of. And this is the story we're going to pick up today. But don't forget to have with you today your, your Bible, also a pen and some paper. You can write down your notes and questions. Remember to bring those notes and questions to class on Sunday so that we can talk about them all together and learn from one another just a little bit. And also, before we begin, Let's remember that we are beloved and baptized children of God in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, let's get back to our story. So, about 500 years after Joseph's life, the people of Israel were, were growing and growing. But there was a big problem. The memory of Joseph and all the good things that he had done were beginning to fade. And eventually there came a new pharaoh into power. And when that new pharaoh looked out and he saw the, this growing number of Israelites, he began to fear them. And so he was worried they were going to take over. And so he did something pretty despicable. He made them his slaves. And he put them to all sorts of work you know, in building projects, but also working in the fields. And he feared them so much that he didn't just stop at making them slaves. He gave a special edict that is a special law. And the law was this that all newborn Hebrew males should be killed. That's pretty despicable, isn't it? But there was one baby that escaped that death sentence. And not only did he escape the death sentence, he found his way into Pharaoh's own home. And that special baby was Moses. In fact, Moses grew up in the household of Pharaoh. But as he grew up, he began to identify more and more with his Hebrew people and with their suffering. And there was one day when his anger came out as he saw a slave master beating a Hebrew slave. And he was so angry, Moses was, that he killed this slave master. And so Moses knew that he couldn't stay in Egypt, so he actually fled out into the wilderness and he began a new life as a shepherd. That is, until one day he saw a bush that appeared to be on fire, kind of like it was burning, but it wasn't. It was the presence of God. And as he investigated this burning bush, God spoke to him with a message. And it was this, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people out of Egypt. Now that's a pretty big ask of Moses and in fact, Moses didn't like that at first. He protested several times. But knowing that God would be with him, he did go to Pharaoh. And he delivered God's message. Pharaoh, though, had a hard heart. and He, he refused to let Moses' people go. And so to get his attention, God sent nine different judgments. We call them plagues. And he threatened to send one more, the worst of them all. And each time, Pharaoh refused again and again, so God acted. But not before warning the Israelites what was to come. God warned everyone in the land that there was going to be a night in which he would send his angel to kill the firstborn of every family, both Egyptian and Israelite alike. However, God provided a way that they could be saved. And this is what it was. Each family could take a spotless lamb, kill it, and put the blood on the doorpost. And if the Lord would see it, he would pass over that house and spare that child from death. Now that's a really important time in the history of God's people. They call it the Passover, because God passed over those that he saw the blood. 
Now, God carried out this promise and this threat. And after losing his firstborn son, Pharaoh finally commanded the Israelites to get out of the country. And immediately, the people of Israel gathered their belongings and they left Egypt as quickly as they could. And God led them in a special way. He led them, led them by a, a pillar of cloud by day and then also a pillar of fire by night. But not long after the Israelites left, Pharaoh changed his mind because he wanted his slaves back. And so he sent his army to go and chase after them. And he caught up with them at a place called the Red Sea. Now between Pharaoh's army on one side and the Red Sea on the other side, the people of Israel thought they were done for. But God wasn't done yet. He told Moses to raise his staff. And as he did that, God parted the waters and there was dry ground. And so the people of Israel were able to escape from Pharaoh's army walking across on dry land. And after the people of Israel got through and, and Pharaoh and his chariots were, were chasing after them, God once again told Moses to turn and to raise his hand. And the waters came and drowned the army of Pharaoh. And so through the waters of the Red Sea, God delivered his people from the hand of Pharaoh. The people were once again free, free to live for God, free to serve him. And so we hear the story and we give thanks for the power of God. We give thanks for the love of God in saving his people. And we also remember that this is going to point us to an even greater deliverance that is yet to come. But we're going to talk about that in our next video. So until then, let us end with our blessing. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless us now and forever. Amen. See you next time.